on 95.3. We have got our estate planning show that we do every month. And I got to tell you, we're here with David Shulman of Ginsburg Shulman. I got to tell you, since we have gone as a family through a death, I have so much respect for what you do because I've seen the fighting that goes on. It's almost we just got through a family law show, and that's in a very emotional thing. But so is estate planning. Absolutely. It is like, I mean, the families that were real tight all of a sudden, they're like at each other. and Especially after someone passes, the probate can be very difficult. It's amazing what money does to people. Sure. And you see this Every day. all the time. So, Dave, tell us about your practice. Well, we're a boutique practice in downtown Fort Lauderdale. We're also a satellite office in Boca. Where we really focus and specialize in estate planning, elder law, probate, guardianship, and trust administration. Now, the Boca office that's being a satellite, is that by appointment only? That is. Okay. And you're on Las Olas. Right. We're, so you're we're easy to right get downtown to. Fort Lauderdale, Las Olas, Bank of America building, 401 grill it's the building where grill 401 is and i love your your background your story how you got started if you want to share that well you know i grew up down here i grew up in fort lauderdale i went away to brandeis for undergrad Not and then bad school then i went to gw for law school and i'm really a tax lawyer a lot of estate planning is tax right now what the, we can talk about and that's changing it may change so when i was in law school i really didn't know what i wanted to do what area i was going to go into but i ended up getting this internship over the summer with the department of justice in the tax division and i just fell into it and i really liked you it. had no idea that's what you were going I, I have no idea i was going to but i really like I, I didn't have an accounting background or a tax background and i really enjoyed it so i started taking more tax classes than after law it took all, as many as i could and after law school i worked for the irs in washington for about seven years or so and you know i i was ready to come home i was tired of the snow and the cold i want to come back to fort lauderdale and I came back, I took a year off, I got my master's, my LLM in estate planning. I worked for, then I worked for a big firm for a few years, then I went out on my own, and a few, couple of years ago, I merged my partner with Jill. When you went for the, you worked for the larger firm, was it here in Florida? It was in Fort Lauderdale, Okay. Yeah. So you decided... Well, big firm, I didn't like big firm life, it wasn't for me. You liked the one-on-one -on -one Right, I like to control my own destiny and my clients, to, to make my own decisions. It really gives me the opportunity to serve my clients better. And then when did Ms. Ginsburg come on? Uh, we merged about three years ago. And then what does she do? What does she specialize well, we, in? Well, we both do the, a lot of the same thing. We both do estate planning. We, don't do pro, we both do probate. But her specialty, and she's really developed it over the past few years, is guardianship and elder law, in which an elderly person may be being exploited and can no longer take care of themselves for various reasons. Either they don't know their documents done or their family members exploiting them. And she can go in and have a guardian appointed to really make sure that they're being taken care of properly. So what if your client who's older and there's a family member trying to say that maybe all of his faculties or her faculties aren't right. there anymore? Do you go to court for them? Is that you, Sometimes. what you do? Because you've got to prove that he does understand what well, he's doing. Hopefully, she... hopefully, if you do correct, proper planning, you, you really need to. Pl if you do proper planning, you can avoid a guardianship. You really don't want a guardianship. It's really, really the last possible thing to do because it's very expensive and it's very intrusive. Because what happens, you go to court, the judges will, if you will rule you're incapacitated, and will actually take your rights away. Wow. Will take away your right to make decisions for yourself, to where you can live, to control your money. It will appoint someone to make those decisions for you. We really want a less restrictive alternative. If you have proper planning and appoint someone under your power of attorney to make decisions for you, under a healthcare decision to make healthcare decisions for you, then the goal, even if you do a revocable trust and have a successor trustee make financial decisions, the goal is to avoid a guardianship. A guardianship's not a good thing, it's a bad thing. Now, it's a necessary thing sometimes, but it's really the last thing you want to do. I want to. I'm going to open the lines up. If you've got a, uh, a question for David, please give us a call at 888-565-1470. That's 888-565-1470. So I don't know if I've shared this with you yet, but we have been putting Ask the Experts on Twitter. 
and we have started asking people, this is who we have coming on this right. week, do you have any questions? Guess what the number one question is to ask you? What's that? When to start planning your will? What age? Number one question. The, 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 and the, and the, it's an easy answer. It's like when, now. It's I a, think it's because mm, of mm. Prince. You know, Prince right. died. He, I'm sure he wasn't expecting to die as, as young as he was, and he didn't have a will. Now, if you're an adult... It's, and you're, eight, you're 18. You need a, at least a basic set of documents. You need a power of attorney, a Even health reserve. Even if you don't have a lot of assets? Yeah, at least have, a finan- at least have the, the advanced directives that will appoint someone to make decisions for you if you can't make them yourself. A power of attorney, a health surrogate. But once you start developing assets, whether you get married in your 20s, you get you have kids, as soon as you have kids, you absolutely need to have planning done. You know, if you have a house, it, it's really a good idea to, so to start getting planning done. If you're in your 20s, it's not too early. Well, out of the 21 questions we've got, the second question is, what is estate planning? Sta- I thought that had been number one, maybe. Estate planning is the whole process. Okay. The, the, it's, the, it's a general term we give to the whole process of putting your affairs in order. Of I, We sit down with the clients. We do it. There's a very extensive questionnaire. We ask about their family. We ask about their assets. We ask about what their goals are for themselves, for their children. And really to put it all together, see what happens in the case you get incapacitated or after you pass away, after you die. What do you what do you want for your kids? Do you want them to get this money outright? Which usually is not a good idea. And there's there's tax questions involved, there's asset protection, there's a real estate, there's, there's family law, there's all sorts of issues that come together to merge into estate planning. What's the average age of the person that comes to you for the first time for estate planning? Oh, at all at all different ages. I yesterday I saw someone in their twenties and, okay. and someone. I have a client in their eighties. I, wow. I have a client who's who's in his eighties who's never done estate planning before. Wow! And needs to get it done. What would uh, someone who's eighty years old? Why would they not? have done this sooner Cause, cause what are the excuses because we procrastinate you know everything we do is well one we don't like to face our own mortality you know right. we don't like to think about the fact that one day we're going to die and it's very we only know about today we do not know about tomorrow you know it's very difficult for people to think about to talk about so they put it off and people procrastinate in general. That for every, I mean, we're a society where we're constantly on the go. We have jobs, we have kids, we have work, we have all the. We don't have time, and that's it's another. It's another thing on their list. You know, I I have a list of fifty things I need to do, and then I'm procrastinating on. Not necessarily this, but, but a person who procrastinates, what could happen to them by could, not doing this planning? Well, they can die. Okay, and, and t- but or, what does that or, mean? Or they, or they can become incapacitated. If okay. they become incapacitated, they're going to need a guardianship in which the court will appoint someone to make decisions for them. If, if they don't have someone. If, if, they don't, if they don't have a power of attorney or health care surrogate, the court could appoint someone wow. to take their rights away. And if they die, you know, the property may not go to who they want it to go to or how they want it to go to them. The taxes may be higher. And there could be all sorts of unintended consequences that if they don't have proper planning. Now, generally, if you're a, a married couple with a minor child and both parents die, who's going to become, who's going to take care of the kids? The court may decide, it may, it may be someone who you don't want to take care of your kids. You know, the more complicated your life is, the more unanticipated consequences there could be. Especially if you have a second marriage, and you each have kids from prior relationships, and you want to both take care of your current spouse and your other kids, it could be a mess. you got to tell everybody what a revocable living trust is, because that was one of the top questions. Explain to me what a revocable living trust is. A revocable living trust is a way to, the main purpose of it, it's a will substitute. It's to avoid probate. So what happens is that when you die, if you own assets, then you have to go to probate. And probate's the process of the court administering your estate, appointing a personal representative, 
paying off the creditors and distributing of assets to the beneficiaries. If you take your assets and you set up a, a revocable living trust and you transfer your assets into the trust, then when you die, you don't own the assets. The trust owns the assets, so there doesn't necessarily have to be a full probate. Also, if you become incapacitated, the successor trustee can take over. And Isn't probate very expensive, too, it, it if could you have be. to get into probate? It could be very expensive. So this would be a way to it, possibly avoid probate. No, avoid probate. Now, there's still administration of the trust. There's still a trust administration. And there's some circumstances where probate isn't necessarily a bad thing, but generally, you want to, if you put your assets into the trust, it could avoid probate later on when you die. Well, 1470 AM throughout the day has a lot of wealth management people, investment people. Um, as an estate planning attorney, a lot of the audience here have assets. Right. And tell everybody if they don't plan now, what could happen to those assets? Well, one, again, if they don't plan now and there's a guardianship, a guardianship can cost twenty five, fifty thousand dollars Okay, that's that would be a good uh, reason to eat up the assets. And if they're then they die, the assets aren't necessarily gonna go where they want them to go to. Especially if they're have a more modern family with a, a second marriage, third marriage, children from different relationships. You know, if it's your if your if your first marriage Unified kids, common children, and maybe, maybe not. It won't be as complicated, but that's very rare these days. People have more complex relationships, and that not everything's done jointly. So it could be very difficult. And and what happened? You could end up disinheriting someone who you may not want to. That's right. So there's. It's so important to plan. We are. We're going to go to break right now. I'm here with David Schulman of Ginsburg Schulman. Give everybody your phone number. Um, 954-990-0896. And you know what? You've got such a great website. What is your website address? It's ginsbergshulman.com, G-I-N-S-B-E-R-G-S-H-U-L-M-A-N.com. And we're going to go to break, but I want to tell you if, um, and I, I have been a one who's procrastinating, it's what I think it's so good about you is because we, we meet every month, you don't talk, I mean, I understand everything you say. And to me, when you're sitting down with an attorney, you better understand everything, especially when they're talking about your assets. Absolutely. And I love the way you present everything. It, and we've actually had an email, I guess it was about two or three months ago, from someone who emailed us and said, you've got a really good estate planning attorney on there. And that's what we so, – because when it comes to estate planning, you don't want to have to go Google somebody. Right. That's the worst thing you can do. And, you know, remember the Yellow Page used to be the biggest ad with sure. the do best. That was never true. Trust me. So when we come back, I've got so many questions for you. Again, the firm is Ginsburg Schulman. You're, they're on Las Olas. And we come back, we got tons, tons of more questions for David. We'll be right back. When was the last time your will was reviewed, or do you even have one? Do you know that without a will, the government decides how your property is distributed upon your death? Did you know that without proper estate planning, your children would receive every penny of their inheritance on their 18th birthday to use or lose without any guidance? The law offices of Ginsburg Shulman provide their clients with comprehensive estate planning, probate and trust administration, guardianship, business planning, and wealth preservation. They believe that planning for the future should not be left until the future. Whether you are young, middle-aged, or in retirement, your life is always changing. Comprehensive estate planning can protect you and your loved ones from the unexpected. When you experience a significant life cycle event or life change, it is a good time to have your estate planning reviewed. Contact their office today at 954-839-8705. And we're back. We're here with David Schulman. He's with he's got he's the partner of Ginsburg and Schulman. Their offices are located in Las Olas. Give everybody your phone number. Um, 954-990-0896. You know, I wanted, this was, uh, uh, we don't really talk a lot about trust, creating a trust. Give me your views on creating trust. On what type of trust? There are all sorts of types well, of trust. Well, we just talked about one. Give me some other that are very popular. Um, 
And there's two that you recommend. Well, there's two main categories of trust. There's revocable trust, which we a, just spoke about, and there's irrevocable okay. trust. A revocable trust means you can change it at any time. It's revocable. You can take it back. You can change it. You can amend it. Why would it. someone want to do that? And that's that's basic estate planning. That n the purpose of that is when they want to avoid probate or maybe avoid a guardianship later on. They create this revocable trust. They put all their assets into it, and it really is a sub substitute for your will. Instead of doing a will, instead of your assets going by your will, it goes by the trust. And you can change it at any time. You can say you, you get divorced, you want to take your spouse out, you want to put your girlfriend in, you have more kids, one of your kids is you know, successful, they don't need the money, one of the kids maybe has special need, develop special needs, or maybe develop a drug addiction problem, so you want to change it. You can constantly change it, just like you can change your will. You can also change your revocable trust. The other type of trust is an irrevocable trust, which means you can't change it. And that's why would someone do that, though? Why would one? Someone those are do generally it for uh, for more advanced estate planning purposes and for for tax purposes. Generally, the will, the the rev, the we call it a rev trust for sure, for revocable. You're keeping your assets okay. and your. And so you can change it. An irrevocable trust is generally used when you're making gifts, when you want to give assets away now while you're alive. So you want to say you have, and this is, these are from people for a lot, with a lot of money for significant assets. Let's say you have a new grandchild born and you want to give, you want to start a college fund, but you want to give them $100,000 or $50,000. But you know, obviously you're not going to give it to a baby. Right. Yeah, what you can do is you can set up an irrevocable trust and you would transfer the assets to the irrevocable trust now, and there would be a trustee who's responsible for investing the money and managing it. And then when the child is older, we'll distribute the child. And a lot of these are done for tax purposes, both for asset protection purposes and tax pur purposes. You know, I want to get into probate because you also handle probate. What is the process involved with probate? Probate is, it's all, it's very straightforward. When someone dies, the first thing you need to do is you need to have a personal representative appointed. So you petition the court to have the court appoint someone who become the personal this is the power representative. power of attorney? No. That, this after, is different. This is different. This is after the person dies to appoint a personal representative. And it's the job of the personal representative to manage the affairs of the estate, to, to gather all the assets, to to marshal the assets of the estate. And who is this person using? Um, well, it depends whether or not the... I mean, is it a family member? Often, it's usually a family member. Okay. It depends if the decedent appointed someone in their will, It's a, and they had a will, it's who they appoint. You know, for smaller estates, it's generally a family member, whether the surviving spouse or a child, it's generally who it usually is. For larger estates, there's often a, a professional personal representative to do these job to do is appointed, and it's my job as the attorney to represent them. So the so the job of the personal representative is to gather all the assets to identify the credit. Well, you can't do that. That would be a conflict. Well, no. Well, I help them. Okay. Often, I mean, depending on the sophistication and how much work they want to do. Often I'll do. Do all you the, give them guidelines as to sure. choosing this person? Well, right. When 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 I'm doing the estate planning, I do the I give them guidelines. Now, after the person's died, if there's no will, then someone else has to become the personal representative. And and for smaller estates, it's a surviving spouse or an adult child or a brother or a sister. For larger estates, where there are professionals professional trust companies who could also sometimes serve as a personal representative. So what they do is the state's opens and they have to get, see what the assets are and they publish it in the newspaper or notice to creditors. It says any creditor of the estate, you have three months to come file a claim saying the state owes you money. And if you don't file a claim within three months, then that's it. Well, I've got a, this is maybe a new client for you. It says, is it important for the information I share with my attorney to be 100% confidential? What are your What are your policies in terms of confidentiality? It's not my policy. No one talking to me. It's not my policy. It's the law. Okay. Hundred percent. Everything's 100% confidential. Okay. It's the rules that govern attorneys. It's 
when I when I when I'm a member of the Florida bar, it's not just my policy. It's every attorney has to be a hundred percent confidential. I so, why so he would ask a question so, like that. Well, Maybe well, he well, had a- no people are concerned. You know, people have various types of assets. You know, they may have a hundred thousand dollars. Buried under, buried under the mattress or okay. in a bank account, that maybe you know they, they don't, don't want to disclose. They, they, they don't want to tell people about. It. I'm not, and I'm not talking about anything illegal. They just, you know, they, they don't want their wife. Maybe they don't want their wife to know about it. Now, in that case, I can only represent one spouse, not both spouses. But if you come to me, we, we come in, we shut the door. It's just you and me in there, and everything is 100 percent confidential. And if any attorney who doesn't give you that, so that's a problem. Run away. Uh, here's another from Twitter. I received a letter stating that I am the trustee of my father's estate. I have no idea what I'm supposed to do now. Can your firm help me with that? Absolutely. Okay, we gave him your name. Right, that's great. So, what is what? Tell us what he's asking. Um, he's probably he's probably either appointed personal representative or trustee of a trust set up by his father. He's probably the successor trustee after his father passed away, whose job it is to manage the trust. Now, he doesn't have to take it. He can decline doing it. But if he wants to do it, it's a big job, depending on how much how big the trust is. And there are a lot of responsibilities, and we can actually help people. We can advise them on what they're supposed to do and how it works. I was surprised because we're we're going through that. I was surprised that they are actually paid to do this, and these are family members who are are helping out. Sure, he, he, I didn't realize they got paid for that. You could you could take a trustee's fees if you want to. Oftentimes, and family members in smaller trusts won't, but for larger trusts, it will. I want to get try to get as many questions as I can because everybody knows what time the show is. What effect does a subsequent marriage divorce or child have on a will um that that depends uh, that, that can really ne- negate the will it's called oh, really? a, there, there's a pre if there's a pre-terminated spouse if you're married and you say everything goes to yeah, your will says everything goes to my wife and you get divorced then that's no longer that, that provision is no longer applicable that actually comes out but if you but if you do a will then you get married your spouse has rights and if you have a child and the child also has rights if you haven't updated your will yet. Wow, okay. But, but it's a good idea to get it done. Yeah, I mean, I, I still, it's just mind-boggling that someone with all the assets that Prince had. Right. And all the management that he, you know, people actually managing him and the lawyers that he must have, that he would never have a will. And all the taxes he's going to have to, as a oh, yeah. gonna have to taxes. pay. And then he's actually set up that everybody can uh, say, hey, I... I'm his son. I'm his daughter. Well, I'm sure there's DNA tests. Yeah. Now the taxes are very interesting because we don't know, you know, with the with the pre, with the President Trump and a Republican Congress, it's very possible that they're going to repeal the estate tax. Wow. Well, what you know, I should have asked you this in the <laughs> beginning. What do you see with Trump now? Be almost he'll be our new president. Right. What kind of changes do you think he'll be making? It's very like I said. There's the right now. There's the estate tax. Republicans like to call it the death tax, in which if you when you die and you own a certain amount of assets, they could be taxed before you transfer them to the next generation. Right now, the exemption that is the amount you can die with before it kicks in is about five point four million dollars, and everything over that is taxed at forty forty five percent. Wow, that much. Right, but but if you have less than five point four million dollars, or if a married couple ten point nine million dollars, then it doesn't apply to you at okay. all. So ninety nine percent of people it doesn't apply to Donald Trump. Is that going to change that? I think that the Republicans. I think it's very likely that the, there's going to be significant changes to the estate tax because you, when you have both a Republican president and the Republican Congress. That they're going to, they may repeal the whole thing. Now that may only last until four years, eight years later, until the Democrats come back in and bring it back. But it's, but my crystal ball says that there will be significant changes to the estate tax. Well, next time when you're on with us next month, I really, I want to get into more of what you see happening, and I'm sure we'll hear a lot more with uh, our new president. Our new president, though, is a businessman. He's not a politician at all. So I'll be really curious to see 
what he might be doing, if it's going to be positive or negative, right. and you'll be able to actually relate now, that now to Now, for us. most people, estate planning is local law. If you have less than $5 million, you don't have to worry about the taxes. It's all local law. It's family law. It's asset protection. It's all Florida law, and really the president doesn't have effect on it. But for people with more assets, with several million dollars, then it's going to be a... Well, we're in the area, aren't we? Yeah, and I, I, mean, a lot, a lot, and I have a lot of clients who yeah. I have a lot of very clients. Between who, Miami and, and Fort Lauderdale and Boca, uh, um, I love when you come on. Uh, it's just it's such an easy show to do, and uh, David will be back with us next week. Give everybody next your month. Phone. Next month. That's right. Um, yeah, because happy Thanksgiving. We oh, want, thank we you. We'll see you. And, oh, happy New Year, too. Oh, um, last month was Rosh Hashanah. That's right. Try not to so you're there. working too hard. You know, you're missing all the good holidays. Right. Uh, give everybody your phone number. It's 954-990-0896. And your website. It's www.ginsbergshulman.com. Remember what I say. Do not Google this. You need someone who's really good, someone you can trust, someone you can communicate with, and Ginsberg Shulman is that they're estate planning attorneys. We will be back with you next week. We have a lot of new shows with us, and everybody have a, a great week, and peace and love. Thanks, David. Thank you. Thanks for tuning in today to the Ask the Experts show with Steve-O and Renee. Tune in every Friday from 4 to 5 p.m., while some of the top local experts in their field from Broward and Palm Beach counties educate you in the areas of law, health, financial, and home improvement. You can also call our offices at 888-574-6999 to become an expert on our show. The opinions expressed on the preceding sponsored program were strictly those of its hosts, guests, and callers, and not necessarily those of this station, its staff, management, or sponsors.